Man. I change your bum life. You fight me, it's a celebration. Yeah, I'll beat you. When you uh, sign to uh, fight me, it's a celebration. You ring back home, you ring your wife. Baby, we done it. <laughs> We're rich, baby. Conor McGregor made us rich. Break out the red panties. Let's get it all. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the MMA Short Show. As always, your boy, Steven Moustairs. And guys, finally, we have a nice little, you know, calm week. No UFC fight night this weekend. And, you know, as much as I want one, it is kind of nice to kind of sit here and relax. And I'm, I'm working on a video this week. I'm probably going to have it up tomorrow or Friday. And it's pretty wild with this timing and everything. But, you know, I'm doing, working on a video just, you know, speaking about previous champions and UFC history that, you know, the UFC just can't stand. And they want to get the belt away from them so bad. Or, you know, Dana White hates them. You know, certain things like that. And then. I find myself today or those last week or so, you know, been hearing about this whole Aljamain Sterling versus Dana White. And for people, I guess, that don't know, I mean, just real quick, you know, clearly Aljamain Sterling just went through, what, three or four fights and within a year and a half, I think three fights within the last three, 13 months, we're all defending the belt, you know, beats Piotr Jan, beats, you know, TJ, beats Cejudo just, what, two weeks ago? And the UFC's instantly, Dana White's instantly just making him fight Sean O'Malley. And, you know, Aljo's out here, you know, speaking. He's been very vocal about how he's had partially torn biceps for the last, you know, year or two. And, you know, he beat Piotr Jan on him, beat TJ with him, beat Cejudo with him, you know. Like, you know, he says, hey, man, you know, I've been pretty busy for you guys. I've been doing everything you want. Like, let me go get surgery. And then instantly Dana's like, oh, no, if you want to go do that, you know, it just sounds like you don't want the fight. Like he always does at the press conference, bullying these fighters into saying they don't want fights. Like as soon as the media gets to ask him a question and go, oh, what's going on? He's always his number one go to is, oh, these guys just don't want to fight. And then it tests the guy's ego. And then, of course, they're going to fight these fights. But it's really just their managers trying to get him more money or trying to make it a little better for these fighters. And, you know. He's instantly like, oh, we'll have an interim title fight for Sean O'Malley. He's fighting for sure in July or August. Like, you need to turn it around ASAP. And, you know, I it's not that shocking just because, you know, two weeks ago I did a video, you know, right after, literally, I think it was Sunday or Monday, right after the Suhudo sterling fight. It was talking about how the UFC has never wanted a champion so badly, a new one. And is, that's in Sean O'Malley because, again, another contradiction from Dana White, even though he always says, you know, I'll never have fighters come into the octagon ever again. Like after the whole GSP Matt Hughes thing, after John Jones with Shogun Hua, like he, he did that for a little bit there and then they got rid of it. It kind of got tacky and they were afraid of, you know, just people getting fights in the octagon and stuff. And of course, the whole Connor Habib thing, they've been trying to settle that. And then, of course, contradiction, you know, Dana White comes in, you know, pulls Sean O'Malley right in front of fucking Sterling right after he just won a grueling fight. And like, oh, this is going to happen. And then now all of a sudden they're forcing him to fight within a month or two. And it's like, dude, like it's just fucked up, man. I don't know about you guys. I just I just can't stand the treatment that this guy does to these fighters. Like unless you have Dana White privilege, the US, UFC could be a cold motherfucker to fight for. I couldn't even imagine personally. But like, guys, I couldn't. It's just so hard already to already decide that you want to be an MMA MMA fighter for your profession. And then not only be able to make it to the UFC of win a couple times in the UFC, not just that, not, not is that just impossible, but then you want to become the one or 2% of fighters that have ever fought to become a champion. And then not only become a champion, but to defend it one, two, three times like Sterling has, like that's a feat that not many people can do guys. I mean, there's probably what, 10 people out there that have ever defended the belt that much in the UFC. Like I can go back and look, but you know, it's just my mind boggling to me. That this guy goes out, fights three times within 13 months, four times within, I think, a year and a half. And I know it hurts him a little bit that he had that whole, you know, freaking, you know, like the Oscar performance against Piotr Jan in the first fight. But the guy comes back out, beats Piotr Jan a second time, beats TJ because I know people hated on him because TJ came in hurt. But that's not Sterling's fault. He dominated, got him out of there. And then he fights a Triple C who didn't fight for three years. So I know that's not the greatest win, but it still was a very impressive win. And guess what? Regardless if you think he won or not. He's the champion that, you know, the judges gave it to him. So it's super hard to sit here and, you know, agree with Dana White. As much as I love Sean O'Malley, as much as I really do agree that Sean O'Malley would be the first marketable 135 champion of all time. Like, it's still just so fucked up, man, because then you guys got going to Dana White privilege, man. You got Conor McGregor, who was technically double champ for what, a year and a half before they stripped him finally because he wasn't defending. But then you guys got like Sterling, who just fought two weeks ago, three weeks ago, threatening to strip him and have an interim fight. Same with Francis Ngannou. He beat Stipe and said, oh, I need to get surgery real quick before I fight Cyril Gaon. They go, oh, no. Okay, that's, you know, two months later, I think they had Cyril Gaon versus Derek Lewis ready for an interim title. Like, we see it all over the place. Davison Figueredo beat Brandon Moreno. Said, hey, I got to get surgery real quick. 
literally within two months, you know, oh, okay, well, we're going to have an interim title fight between Kai Car France and Brandon Moreno. Like, you know, I have so many times about this, like, and like I said, working on this video I'm working on, you know, you guys got like Demetrius Johnson, Chris Cyborg, Tyron Woodley. Like you got these guys that go out there and become champions and everything and do everything they've ever needed to do for the UFC. But as soon as the UFC gets a chance, they're either trading them or letting them go, doing some sort of thing or booking them up against a terrible fight. And it's just so fucked up that, you know, he's sitting there at these press conferences and saying that these guys don't want to fight and they don't want it bad enough. And it's like, I don't know. It's just so tough to watch, man. Like, could you guys imagine being an up and comer right now that wants to, you know, you know, maybe you maybe you're eight and zero or something right now. Maybe you haven't signed to the UFC yet, but you're looking out there. PFL's growing. I think they might buy Bellator, but still Bellator is there. One championships there. You know, you got all these, you got all these opportunities right now. And I know the UFC has that big like golden bow on it and everything, but man, I'm telling you guys right now, there's no way that these guys are watching this and not thinking like okay, do I really want to fight for the UFC right now? Like, what if I just don't mesh with Dana? I'm just not Dana's favorite cup of tea. Like, he can make my life living hell. So it's just super tough, man, to watch these things because as much as I want, like I said, as much as I want Sugar Sean to become a champion and everything, I still think Aljamain Schilling has done so much. He's done more than a lot of people ever have. He deserves a little break. Look, Leon Edwards just beat Kamaru Usman twice and within, what, seven, six months or seven months or like that, and they're letting Leon take a solid six, seven-month break. That's all Aljo's asking. He's not asking for a year break. And they're out here like, oh, no, you need to start your, your training camp literally within three weeks of your last fight, even though you just beat a, you know, a double champion and one of the greatest you know, combat athletes that we've ever seen. Like, oh, sorry, no, you got to jump in and fight O'Malley instantly because we hate you. And it's just, oh, dude, it's just so tough, man. And it's so contradicting. And it's, it's got to be hard for us fans to sit here and still love this stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. I will always watch UFC. UFC is king. I don't know. I don't know if BFL or anything's ever going to catch up. I really don't. But, you know, still, I like how we do have some competition out here, and it's making it a lot more fun. We got guys like Francis out here speaking up for themselves. It's going to take more fighters like Izzy, you know, Usman, Leon, all these guys, John Jones, all these guys. It would take a lot of these guys to finally get there. But I'm just telling you guys, man, this just doesn't feel right. I just I don't like it. It's contradicting as hell. I'm sitting here kind of confused now as a fan, like, not only did I do a video talking about the BMF belt and how contradicting and confusing that is where, you know, for a whole year or two, we're sitting there talking, oh, no, that was a one-time thing. Jorge will never defend it. And then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, we're throwing it on a Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier card, and he's all about it. Dana White's all about it for some reason. You know, he's contradicting on catchweight, saying Kamaru and, you know, Hamza can't fight at a catchweight, even though he books catchweights all the time, like he literally just did with Hamza and Kevin Holland to save that whole card. You know, the whole... The whole ranking system, how one second it means everything when like Volkanovsky and fucking Islam are fighting. Oh, pound for pound, number one versus number one champion in the division. Like, but then all of a sudden when Paulo Costa and Sean Strickland have fights against, un, you know, unranked guys. Oh, that's not how it works. You know, it's just it doesn't matter if you're ranked or not. It's like, what, what, what is it, man? Because it just seems like you're just going with the flow and you just do whatever you want. And yes, you can do that because it's the UFC. It's his whatever. It's his baby. But like. Man, it's just, it's got to be hurting the fans' eyes on him. It's got to be understood. Like, we're not stupid out here. We're catching on to these things. And I just, I mean, I do feel bad for Aljo. It just, I feel bad for every other future champ, too, because, like, it's fucked up. You guys got, we got, we see it all the time. I'm a broken record. Bala Muhammad's out here winning however many in a row, and he's not even going to get a title fight because guess what? Hamza might beat Kamaru Usman, and they're going to go, okay, well, we're giving Colby Leon. And if Hamza beats Usman, guess what? Hamza's going to jump over Bala. But then we got guys like Conor McGregor who can sit out forever. Colby Covington can sit out forever, not fight. And they get one little win and, oh, they're right back into the title shot. And it's, I don't know, man. I, I talked about it literally just a couple of days ago. talked about how I think, you know, fighter rankings have really hurt the sport. And it's went from, you know, people just going out there, shutting the fuck up and just putting on a great performance regardless of who they're fighting, ranked or not, to now all of a sudden these guys get a number five by their name. And they're like, oh, I'm not fighting number seven because that's a fight down and I don't want to do that or oh, I'm a number three. I'm just going to wait for a title fight. Like, I don't know. The UFC is getting really weird right now. And I just find it really weird, the timing that I'm sitting here doing a video on, you know, champions that have been hated on so much. And then all of a sudden, now Jermaine Sterling's, you know, being very open. And of course, he's out here talking about, okay, well, what if I do go fight? And Dana's, oh, no, well, we'll just throw an interim title fight. because Sean O'Malley's going to fight. It's just like, man, like, make it make sense for me. So, you know, I do feel bad for Aljo. I hope everything goes well with him. I'm just really confused, man. Like, what What if he beats Sean O'Malley? Are they going to fucking make him fight again? Or what if Sean O'Malley fights and beats, you know, you know, beats Sterling? Are they going to let him sit out for a couple years, you know, a year or whatever, just to get a break and, you know, take vacation? So 
I don't know. I hope you guys can let me know how you feel about it. I think it's super fucked up, but Dana White privilege, baby. It always wins. But as always, your boy, Stephen Moose, And let's go, baby.